Okay folks, so here I am at the Viper Loch. It's not its proper name actually, but it's what I've always called it. Getting here involved a bit of cycling and a few river crossings. And this is the first time I've been here for many, many years. This is a dry fly only loch. The reason for that being it's so weedy it's impossible to fish sunk flies. So I'm going to approach this today and I have seen a couple of fish rising. This fish a big terrestrial, it's a sedgezilla, sorry an elkzilla I have on. So I'll give it a go with that and see how it goes. As I say I've seen one or two, one or two fish rising. One or two of them look to be not bad. Not that I've ever had anything really big out here. There's a lot of damselflies flittering around. Is that, is that a proper word? Flittering around? They're flitting around. Not a lot of ripple, unfortunately. And that's the reel beginning to come off this road. I've got a new rod for this trip. A seven piece, five weight, which fits discreetly into the rucksack. It's fine for not drawing attention to yourself. But you, I don't know if you can see, this lock is dead, dead shallow. And dead weedy. Anyway, this new rod is surprisingly nice to cast with. Seven pieces, I mean seven spigot joints, which means it's quite stiff. But if you're used to stiff fast action rods, you would probably like this. Now I usually get a fish or two when I come here. As I say, it's been many years since I've been up here. It's just such a huge effort to get here. But it's an absolute stunning day. The weather so far this summer has been pretty cold and windy up here. But today, there's a bit of a high pressure has moved in. And the temperature's forecast to get into the low 20s. I think these fish are just teasing me. That's one or two rising behind me. I wonder if they're taking these blue damsels. <coughs> the lock actually seems slightly less weedy than I remember it, and a bit shallower as well, but obviously that's just a fickle memory. Anyway, I'll stay for an hour or so. It was lovely just to come in on the bike. I bought myself a, a new e-mountain bike just specifically for trips like this and just for general exercise and having the motor just takes the strain off the legs on these rough tracks Some say it's cheating but goodness me I'm almost 70 years old Get a bit of a ripple now, which should help. <coughs> Just jerk the fly over the surface gently. See if that brings the attention of any fish. It's actually still quite early in the morning. It's not even 10 o'clock yet, about 5 to 10. I'm really surprised how nice this road is to cast with. It's a Shakespeare agility expedition tour or something like that. Eight and a half foot five weight it is. 
seven piece. It wasn't expensive, it was a bit 60 or 70 quid. So it's just a cheap rod. And surprisingly good, all things considered. <coughs> I think I'm going to lose my voice. Yeah, so I'm not going to say where this lock is. Any of you who are familiar with this area might be able to figure it out for themselves. But I just call it Viper, the Viper Lock. On account of the number of adders there are around here, there are unbelievable numbers of them. So you come off the main road, hit the Buffalo Trail for a couple of miles, turn left at Rattlesnake Creek, <laughs> then climb the hill and that will bring you to the Viper Walk. First time I came up here fishing, many, many years ago, and it was April, it was far too early because it's so high up here. And the loch was absolutely alive with frogs and toads spawning. So I would imagine that the fish must feast on tadpoles here. I've never seen so many frogs and toads in one place. It was unbelievable. And that was the day I christened the loch because I was up here with my dog and she was running out in front of me as dogs tend to do, and every now and then she would leap in the air. And I think to myself, what the heck is she doing? And it was adders. Adders sprawled out in the sunshine to try to warm up in the spring sun. So she went straight on the lead after that. Never seen so many snakes in one place. Some of them were absolute whoppers as well. I didn't realise adders could grow that big. I'm going to move further along in that direction because I can hear fish rising behind me. Although I've got a feeling that as soon as I, I cast I'm going to put them down because it's so calm. But my goodness, it's good to be out in the warms. Right, we will go here. It's a bit deeper here. This is where I saw the fish rise. I heard them rising. So I'll come a few casts here anyway. There's one rose over there. Not classically ideal conditions, the, the brilliant sunshine and the near flat calm, but you never know. I think any fish that's cruising out there is going to be able to see me a mile off. I've often wondered about if you were float tubing this loch, but seeing it now. Just remember how shallow it is. I think your feet would be hitting the ground even out in the middle. It's an awful lot of paraphernalia to lug in that distance because that's a that's a four mile bike run. Most of it uphill on very very rough track. Well, I don't think I've ever gone as long without a fish here. Usually you start getting fish. The pattern here is you usually get loads of fish to start with and then you scare them all because it's small, it's shallow and the fish can see you. 
So you usually get quite a few fish to start with and then nothing. But so far today, <laughs> it's been nothing. Anyway, it's nice just to be out, out in the hills. Often see golden eagles here. That's rare not to see them. Plus all the usual wagtails, sandpipers, run-of-the-mill birds, pipits, larks, peregrine falcons off and up these cliffs there. But the eagles are the real, really is, the, the eagles are what you really want to see, they're so magnificent. I mean, this is really everything that your busy, small stocked fishery isn't. <laughs> Not that I'm knocking the busy, small fisheries. They serve an important purpose and to each his own, but this is something special. I think I'm going to give the fly a bit more action. Fish for another 10 minutes or so and then stop for a sandwich and be a bit peckish. <coughs> Slap in the water a bit there. Maybe try to change a fly actually. Right, I think I'll stop for a bite to eat. And maybe modify the leader a bit, put a second fly on, something a bit smaller and darker. Another dry. And I'll just keep the big Elkzilla on as an indicator. Right, okay, food time. Okay, that's me refreshed. Arden's an Arden's party sandwich. And I've changed my setup a wee bit. I've put two dries on now. A much smaller elk here, Caris. Oh, that was a fish just rose in front of me there. Don't, I don't think I quite covered it. Yeah, the big terrestrials usually really work well here. But so far today, nothing. Yeah, I can see some fish rising in these reeds out there, but it's way past casting distance. So it just goes to show that even easy locks are not always a banker. I'll go back up and try that slightly deeper water again. We'll go here. <coughs> Masses of tadpoles in the shallows here. really feel myself sinking into the bottom here. Yeah, there are still fish rising here and there, but I just can't tempt them. Right, I'll try giving the fly some movement. Right, try the slightly deeper water here. 
I'm getting a, a real bad feeling that the blank is on here. Because the lock is dead. Oh, there we go. Ah, I lost it. Oh my goodness me. Right, I'll try that again. I've got a real feeling that the blank's on here. That took the big terrestrial. It wasn't a very big fish. But as often happens on these huge flies, you lose a fish. Huge, huge barbless hooks. But anyway, it's a bit encouraging. I saw the fish, it couldn't have been any bigger than 10, 10, 11 inches. Let's try that again. It looks like the blank's on here. Come on, the fish. slapping the water really badly just not quite having the length in this road I think that's probably not helping so it doesn't look like there's going to be many fish filmed today but hopefully you'll still enjoy this video it's certainly a lot different from what I normally produce on the Wee Local River, which incidentally is not really worth fishing at the moment. It is dangerously low. So I've just I just stay off it. I go down and have a look now and then. And you can see the occasional fish rising. But the water is just it's, it's pathetically low and of course the farmers are irrigating like there's no tomorrow. It's just, I've never seen so many water spouts and pumps. I don't know how they get away with it. Environmental disaster. But I guess the way things are in the world at the moment, all the focus is on producing food, unsurprisingly. And if it happens to inconvenience anglers a wee bit, well, maybe that's a price we'll have to accept. I noticed yesterday on the on the the local village Facebook page some of the residents were inquiring about the irrigation pumps because it sounds like they're leaving them running all night and it's disturbing people's sleep. It's a bit inconsiderate, especially if you've got kids. Doesn't bother me, a nuclear explosion wouldn't have waken me up once I get to my bed. <laughs> but if you've got kids or you're a light sleeper, it's not good. I don't think fish numbers are especially high in here. Shit. You tend not to see a lot of fish rising at the same time. I think the, the numbers of fish may be quite low and they just cruise around in the shallow water. I would imagine that in these conditions my fly line's cast a really long shadow on the, on the bed of the loch. Which won't help. Fish just rose out there, but probably just marginally beyond casting distance. There's no way I'm wading out any further here. I'll never be seen again. Yeah, so that e-mountain bike that I bought <coughs> it's proven to be a bit of a revelation actually. I had no idea they were so good. So I looked at all the various models that were available and did a bit of research and decided that I didn't want to spend £3,000. So I went to Halfords and I got this one for 
just over a thousand. Carrera Vengeance. And if that's a cheap run of the mill mountain bike, the expensive ones must be phenomenal because this is really, really good. And it just takes the strain off the old legs. And that is the bike up here on my, my, my old normal mountain bike. I'm not sure I would do that now. I'm just getting a bit too old. Hesitate to say frail, but obviously I don't have the strength I did when I was younger. But this mountain bike has just it's been a complete eye-opener. Well, that sounded like a really good fish rose, but there's no way I'm going to get anywhere near it. Whoa! No hesitation with that take. It's a reasonable fish by the look of it. That's taking the big terrestrial. It's not especially big, but it's a fish. So yeah, that's not a bad fish. See, that's probably about the average size here. Six ounces, half a pound. Beautiful condition. Back you go. Right, that's the blank off. I can go home now. <laughs> Yeah, that was some fight for a wee fish. The take was absolutely vicious. I thought it was something much bigger actually, till I, till I saw it. Which probably also means that a lot of these big fish I'm seeing rising out way, way out on the other side are probably not that big either. But that was the big terrestrial elkzilla, size 8. It's always big, big flies to take fish on here. Right, I'll try. Down in this corner here. But it is a bit shallow. I think I'm going to be glad of, of that e-bike on the way back because this breeze is picking up and I'm going to be cycling straight into it. Right, I'm going to go down to that corner there which is normally far too weedy to fish if I remember. It looks like there's a fair bit of open water there at the moment. Oh, a few casts down there, anyhow. So I'll see you when I get there. Right, here we are. It's quite interesting looking, but it's probably a bit in the shallow side. A few casts anyway. No, I think it's just a bit too shallow here. I think I could probably wade across if I was brave and stupid enough to try it. So what I think I'll do is I'll go back up to the deep water, have another wee shot there and then just call it a day. One more cast here. It's just too shallow.
Right, I'll have a few casts in this deeper water and then probably just call it a day. It's getting to be pretty much unbearably warm now. And the few fish that were rising have stopped. Maybe it should have been out a bit earlier. Or later. Anyway, I've really enjoyed it. It's been like a bit of a homecoming coming back here again. I remember the last time I fished here, it must have been seven or eight years ago. I probably won't be back here again this year. Late May, June's the best time here. But I do have some ideas for uh, utilising the mountain bike. So just watch this space, there might be something interesting coming up before too long. <laughs> what a salesman. What an amount of damselflies on the water here. I wonder if that's what the fish are taking. Yeah, it seems to have died a death. Not that it was especially lively to start with. What a place though, a stunning place. Fish just rose behind me. Wonder if I can get a cast over it without spooking it. Not very accurate, but of course. Oh, oh, oh. Got him, got him, got him, got him. I actually had two there. First one I missed, and this one, unless it's the same one that followed me. But I don't think so, I think this is a separate fish. It's going to go into the weeds. And again, it's the big terrestrial it's taken. Same size as the other one. Beautiful condition. You would think that it would be dark and peaty colours here, but they're not. It's actually quite fertile, this loch. What a lovely fish. The way it goes. Bigger dragonflies in among these damsels. Well, guys, I think I'm just going to call it a day at that. End or a high. That was four fish. Two that I met, one, one a hook that got off, two a hook that landed, and one that I sort of missed. <laughs> So that's two in the bag. So we'll call it a day at that. I won't bother filming any of the return journey because it'll just be pretty much the same, a time lapse of me on the bike, uh, as in the, with the inward journey, or the outward journey, yeah. Anyway, the journey to get here. So I won't bother doing that. And it probably hasn't been my most successful day's fishing, but I hope you enjoy it anyway. Something a wee bit different from normal. So we'll close it at that. If you managed to stick with me this long, thank you very much for watching. And we'll hopefully see you in the next video, whenever that may be. Bye for now.